So let's suppose that we have a certain object with mass 3 kilograms, so let's suppose a ball, and that object is released from a height of 10 meters above a coiled spring. And our spring constant of the spring is not known. Now suppose the spring compresses a distance of 50 centimeters when the ball hits the spring. We want to calculate, using that information, the spring constant. Now, note we're neglecting any type of frictional and drag forces, such as air resistance. And we're also making the assumption that our spring is massless. So that means because only conservative forces are acting on our object, that means our total mechanical energy of the system remains constant. Our total mechanical energy is conserved. So using that information, let's begin by drawing our diagram. So initially, our object is stationary at a position of 10 meters above our spring. So initially, the only type of energy we have is the gravitational potential energy. Now, uh, at the final system, when the object begins traveling downward, the gravitational potential energy begins to transform into kinetic energy, the energy of motion. And when the object hits the spring, the kinetic energy in that object begins to transform into elastic potential energy, the energy stored in our compressed spring. So we're basically trying to find the total mechanical energy before the object begins moving at a position of 10 meters above the spring and then we want to find the final total mechanical energy of the object when the object fully compresses our spring. So notice initially our object has a velocity of zero and the final, in the final condition, we also have a velocity of zero because that's exactly when the spring is fully compressed. So, let's choose our y-axis to run along the axis with the spring. So, when the spring is fully compressed. So, that means the total distance from where our object begins to travel to this position is 10 meters plus this displacement, which is 0.5 meters. So 50 centimeters divided by 100, 0.5 meters. So let's solve it using the following uh, formula. So we have the initial mechanical energy equals the final mechanical energy, our conservation of mechanical energy. So we have three different types of mechanical energy in each case. We have the kinetic energy, the gravitational potential energy, and the elastic potential energy stored in the spring, and the same exact thing in the final case. So in both cases, our velocities are zero. So these two terms cancel out. Now in this case, before our object begins to travel, we have absolutely no elastic kinetic energy because our displacement of the spring is zero. So these two terms cancel out and we're left with MGH1, our height 1, equals. Now in the final case, we said that our velocity is zero, so this cancels out. And because we choose this position to be y equals zero, our height H2 is also zero. So not only will this term cancel, but the gravitational potential energy will also cancel. And we're simply left with MGH1 equals 1 half K, what we're looking for, uh, times displacement of the spring squared. So we know what H1 is. It's simply 10 meters plus this displacement. So 10 meters plus 0 0.5 meters. We know what G is, 9.8 meters per second squared. We know what M is, it's three kilograms. And that equals one half of the thing we're looking for, the spring constant, multiplied by the square of displacement 0 0.5 meters. So we plug that in, we solve for k, and we find that k is equal to approximately 2,000. 470 newtons per meter. So this is the spring stiffness constant of our massless spring. Now this is simply one way to solve our problem. A, a second way and a longer way would have been to break this problem down to two steps. 
First we have to calculate how much kinetic energy is produced right before impact and then in the second step we use that kinetic energy calculation to find our spring constant.